This week, Zimbabwean opposition MP for Citizens Coalition for Change Party, Godfrey Sitole, was granted bail after the judiciary contra controversially made him spend more than 150 days in prison. Sitole was arrested on the 14th of June together with his party's vice chairperson, Job Sikala, and 14 others. They're accused of inciting public violence to avenge the murder of a party activist, More Blessing Ali. There is speculation that President Emerson Mnangagwa has started releasing jailed opposition activists ahead of a visit to Harare by Commonwealth delegation led by Assistant Secretary General Professor Luis Franceschi. There is uh, to assess, they're there to assess if the country is ready to rejoin the Commonwealth. Well, to talk a little bit more about these developments, uh, I spoke earlier to the Triple uh, C's national spokesperson, Fadzai Mahere. Fadzai Mahere, the uh, national spokesperson of the Citizens Coalition for Change Party in Zimbabwe. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, you must be pleased uh, this week with the release of one of your party members, uh, Godfrey Sitole, but more than 150 days in uh, jail without uh, bail. Um, why did it take so long? Well, we breathe a sigh of relief, but we can never say we're pleased because no person should be incarcerated without trial uh, for such a long period, especially in the country's maximum prison. It's not as though uh, that group of uh, persons was being held in the remand prison. The constitution is very clear uh, that bail is a constitutional entitlement. Every citizen is presumed innocent until proven guilty. So there was no reason why Honorable Godfrey Sutole, who is a member of parliament, together with Job Sikala and 15 other members who were incarcerated uh, following uh, violence that erupted after the murder by Zanu PF of More Blessing Ali should be in prison for that long. Clearly, uh, this is an abuse by Zanu PF of state institutions, say state institutions, including the, the legal system, the court system, the police service, the prison service, uh, to um, harass and persecute our members. And we condemn that. Uh, it should never happen in a democratic society that people are incarcerated because of their politics, because they believe differently because they, they want something other than uh, the regime that's currently um, leading the country. All right. Just to be clear, are you saying that the there's nothing wrong with the law, there's, the laws are there, but either the judges are misinterpreting the law or deliberately uh, abusing it? There's absolutely nothing wrong with the law. The constitution has in place safeguards uh, to protect the rights of uh, accused persons. The, the law is very clear that you've got your constitutional rights, including the right to liberty, um, especially prior to, to a conviction. The difficulty we find, we find ourselves in as uh, Zimbabweans is that Zanu PF abuses uh, state institutions. Very recently, uh, the magistrates wrote an open letter anonymously saying we are tired uh, of the capture and abuse by Zanu PF. Uh, we are sick and tired of being prevailed upon uh, to, to make these decisions. So we know that there is, you know, some force at the top that's trying to give a direction and instructions uh, to judicial officers to, to do things that are simply at variance with the constitution, which is something we condemn. Uh, the, the court system should be independent. It should be impartial. Uh, there should be no selective application of the law. And the difficulty is that when Zanu PF members get arrested, they are given bail within less than 24 hours. And when they're arrested, it's for real crimes, uh, crimes of corruption, misappropriating as much as $5 million in state funds, uh, smuggling gold, caught red-handed, and yet they go scot-free. Uh, but when you've got triple C members who are accused of no offense really, just the fact that they wear yellow, the charges don't even hold. That's why you see 150 days down the line, no trial has taken place because these are all blown out charges calculated to persecute and harass uh, Triple C members, especially as we look towards the 2023 election to try and uh, send a chilling effect to all communities that if you stand up to uh, ZANU PF, you will get arrested, you will get abused, you'll get persecuted, you'll get uh, put in jail for a very long time. I mean, it should never happen in that, in that way. The ANC doesn't do that to opposition members in South Africa. SWAPO doesn't do it. Uh, why, why, where does 
Zan Piet get off uh, behaving in this way. I think it's an insult uh, to all to all Africans uh, in the region that they behave in this way, especially when we see the sort of black on black violence. We last saw these extended levels of extended um, pre-trial incarceration during Ian Smith's days. Uh, and, you know, it's a travesty of justice that, you know, citizens have started to say that Mr. Mnangagwa is worse than Ian Smith, is worse than Robert Mugabe, but that's what we've gotten to. Uh, and we've sent out this message to the region that we need long-term uh, election monitoring because, you know, you can't have a free and fair electoral playing field where citizens are, citizens are not allowed uh, to campaign. The mere fact that you wear yellow, which is the color of our movement, it gets you arrested, it gets beaten up. Just the fact of attending a funeral um, of a triple C member gets you incarcerated for 150 days. That's what we've seen uh, with the with the Nyatsime 16. We also see a situation where someone just hires out their lorries to triple C members to transport people, uh, mourners to the funeral and they get incarcerated. It's clear abuse of the law. It should never happen in that way. Uh, but it really is a sign of a, a party, Zanu PF, that's lost popular support. Uh, no party that has got the support of the people, uh, you know, declares war on the citizens as we've seen. But all that said, we do breathe a sigh of relief that Honorable Godfrey uh, Sitole is finally free, but we continue to call uh, for the immediate release of Honorable Job Sikala and the entire uh, Nyatsime group. So far, 15 uh, other members are also in jail uh, for no reason whatsoever. Uh, and so we call for their release. The authorities say that the Nyatsime 16 are guilty of inciting violence. And uh, that's a pretty serious crime. Well, Zanopiev doesn't get to declare uh, who has incited violence and to convict people and to tell people they're guilty. They are not a court of law. Constitutionally, only a court, uh, an independent and an impartial court, can say whether someone is guilty uh, or innocent. So we uh, say that the Constitution presumes all of these members to be innocent until proven guilty. They haven't committed a criminal offence. And like I said, this is why there's been no sensible trial in respect of them. The state can continues to drag its feet, uh, and that's why the trial is stopping. On the other hand, we've got ZANU PF members, including a top leader of ZANU PF, who said that the triple C must be crushed like lice. He was never arrested. That's clear incitement to violence, and it's clear, you know, a genocidal tone in how you deal with your political opposition. We also saw Abdel Mashayanika, who said uh, very recently, but has never been arrested, uh, that the triple C and Nelson Chamisa must be killed. We saw Daniel Gad we're saying just a couple of days ago that destroy the triple C. And so continuously, we've got these uh, statements that are made by ZANU PF members that the triple C should be destroyed, should be killed. And this is done in broad daylight and the police don't do anything because ZANU PF is abusing uh, state institutions and weaponizing the police service, abusing them to do their bidding. It should never be that way. The constitution says that the police service must be independent, impartial and protect all citizens, uh, protect all property regardless uh, of one's political affiliation. There is the Commonwealth group that's uh, in Zimbabwe at the moment to assess whether Zimbabwe has done enough to be readmitted into the Commonwealth grouping. Um, there's speculation that uh, Mr. Sitole's release and maybe we might see other uh, prisoners uh, being released, that it's all to do with this visit and uh, creating the impression that uh, there is movement in terms of reform. The Triple C has consistently said that ZANU PF has failed to roll out a sincere international re engagement uh, effort, program, policy. And in fact, what uh, advocate Nelson Chamisa, our leader, has said time and again is that the Triple C is the only party that has a clear pathway for A, the lifting of sanctions, and also uh, the rejoining of Zimbabwe into the community of nations. And, uh, you know, what we say is that we are a far cry as a country. Uh, uh, from implementing the sort of political reforms and economic reforms that are necessary uh, to reintegrate us into the community of nations. Uh, the fact that violence is perpetrated throughout the, the length and breadth of Zimbabwe against political opponents, women are beaten and are stripped. Uh, the fact that more blessing Ali was murdered in cold blood by a ZANU PF member. The fact that Mboneni Nguwe was murdered in cold blood just this year, uh, you know, for 
attending a triple C rally. All of that paints a very clear picture about the failure by Mr. Mnangagwa to reform. And when we say reforms, we're not asking for any sort of Western endorsement. We're saying uphold our very constitution. You know, it's not the triple C that says that citizens uh, have a right to dignity. It's the constitution. It's not the triple C that says that every person has the right to bail. It's the constitution. It's not the triple C that says that people should not be killed and there should be a right to life and that people should have the right to, uh, you know, express themselves politically as they please, including the right to challenge the government as a set out in section 67. It's the constitution. So our continued uh, retort to Mr. Mnangagwa is uphold the constitution. There's no point trying to look good uh, for the international community and trying to look good for a Commonwealth Observer Mission where your citizens are continuously saying, stop killing us, stop murdering us, stop rolling out economic policies that are causing mass hunger, mass poverty. You've got a broken public health system, a broken education system, 49% of the population is living in extreme poverty. That's a huge indictment on Mr. Mnangagwa, and it tells uh, the Commonwealth uh, Group and any international actor, including SADC uh, and all uh, of the international community, everything they need to know. Mr. Mnangagwa's record speaks for itself. Zimbabweans are hungry, they are poor, they're tired, they're suffering from uh, broken public services. You can barely go into a hospital with a, an X-ray machine, with paracetamol, with bandages, with water. You've got a chronic electricity crisis. The failure to govern is clear for everyone to see. Perhaps finally, if you could talk about uh, the political climate at the moment uh, ahead of these elections. Um, we hear reports of uh, violence, intimidation. What are you observing and uh, who do you perceive as being responsible for what you're seeing? So the political climate at the moment, for starters, is one where the citizens are fed up and everybody, there's general consensus across all provinces of Zimbabwe that we need new leaders. Uh, there's general consensus that we need a new great Zimbabwe. We need a new offer. And, and citizens really want change. It's unsustainable for Zimbabwe to continue the way it's doing. You can't have a situation where, you know, 5 million members of your population are spread across the globe, running away from poverty, injustice, and corruption. So citizens want more. And there has been a heightened courage, heightened speaking out. Um, but with this has come, you know, backlash by ZANU-PF who have now resorted to their default position. All this mask of being a new reform dispensation has completely fallen. Uh, we've gone back to the politics of Robert Mugabe and possibly worse, uh, where people are basically being killed, burnt in broad daylight uh, for their political beliefs. We, uh, you know, the, the triple C is being stopped from holding its political meetings. Uh, ZANU-PF members are disrupting our press conferences, ZANU-PF members are disrupting, you know, any attempt by us, our rallies uh, are, are being disrupted. We've got uh, reports of political violence that we've made uh, to the police, but very little action is being taken. Uh, but reciprocally, uh, our members are the ones who are being arrested. There's almost no uh, top leader of the Triple C who isn't facing some sort of dubious charge, who isn't being threatened, uh, you know, who's being violated in terms of their ability to move and conduct party work. It should not happen in that way. And this does not bode well. Uh, for 2023. As a party, we've said that, you know, we reaffirm our commitment to nonviolent resistance. We are saying, let the people decide. You know, we believe that our value proposition is one that is strong enough uh, to create public uh, support. And we've seen huge public support for the Triple C uh, movement. We've seen the Afrobarometer report coming out and saying that if a snap election were to be called today, the Triple C would win over Zana Pief. We've seen, you know, proliferation uh, of our movement movement it's spreading throughout the country and beyond uh, in the diaspora. And with this, uh, ZANU-PF know that they have no chance of winning a free and fair election. So they're trying to do everything that they can, but we remain confident uh, that the ZANU-PF can never win a free and fair election in Zimbabwe. And so we're putting all hands on deck and we're ensuring that all our ducks are in a row to ensure that we win Zimbabwe for change in 2023. Bazai Mahere, the uh, national spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for Change Party in Zimbabwe. Thanks so much indeed for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, Peter. It's been a pleasure.